From my experience in Russia over the last few years, uh, I've, I've noticed that they were particularly interested in maintaining uh, good relations with all of the Gulf states, mm. including Qatar, the Emirates, and Saudi Arabia. So for me, it's a little uh, uh, incomprehensible to think that they might sort of engage in, in that kind of uh, hacking. And, and let me just say additionally mm. that, um, you know, that kind of a hack would, would um, uh, reflect incredibly uh, deep understanding of mm. our regional politics. It just doesn't seem to be the case. So and perhaps not surprising that you don't buy these claims because they are from uh, from uh, loosely from Qatar itself. Um, the Russian story, perhaps likely a, a, a sidebar to what the bigger picture here is: these seemingly irreconcilable differences between erstwhile friends uh, in the Gulf region. The big question is: why has this all blown up, sir? Now, mm -hmm. and what happens next? <laughs> Well, firstly, I'd say that they are reconcilable differences, and that's precisely why we have mediation taking mm. place. Uh, they are reconcilable because we believe that the uh, policy of the uh, Qatari government, the foreign policy of the Qatari government, of supporting extremist uh, elements within the Arab world and uh, supporting the Muslim Brotherhood and, and, and various mm. other uh, Islamist political organizations, um, is actually not in the interest of Qatar at all. So we actually believe that the, if the Qatari government was genuinely interested in you know, the well-being of the Qatari population, that they would then uh, uh, turn, turn a leaf on those uh, policies and come back None to the None of this is new, though, is it? it isn't That's new. the no. point. No. So you've got a young, what many in the Gulf will see as a ma young maverick leader who is effectively winding other people up. So what happens next? It isn't so as simple as winding other people up. I mean, the, these um, activities have taken place over the last 20 years with the founding mm. of Al Jazeera, uh, with, the, with the coming to power of mm. the, the current Emir's father. Um, and, and it's been a, a set of policies that have been really generally incomprehensible to the rest of the Gulf and the rest of the Middle East. It's beyond our comprehension why they would support consistently extremist elements, uh, not just in the Arab world and the Muslim world, but across the globe. Qatar doesn't seem to be uh, in any sort of mood um, to bow to pressure at this point. Look, we know that the Emir of, of Kuwait, and John, uh, sure. has just been alluding to the fact that he's in the UAE today. There is some shuttle diplomacy and mediation mm -hmm. going on here. Have a listen, though, to what the Foreign Minister of Qatar told me yesterday. Sure. If there is any intervention in our affairs or intervention to change our policy because it's contradicting with other policies in different countries, this is not going to, hap not going to happen because Qatar uh, basing our policy based on our principles. If it won't change, what is the end game here? <laughs> Um, the, the Gulf states in general, the GCC countries, mm. excluding Qatar, of course, in this case, uh, each country has its own foreign policy. The problem is when your foreign policy is to undermine your, your partners within that, that grouping, mm. then this is no longer a foreign policy that is acceptable to the rest. Um, we have reached out to the Qataris on numerous occasions over the last 20 years, including in 2014 when there was an agreement uh, with you know, the previous king, Saudi Arabia, King Abdullah. Uh, and the problem is that when the Qataris say we'd like to, we want to continue dialogue, we must talk, um, the problem is that that's exactly what we've been doing for 20 years. Uh, and while we've been talking, they've been actively undermining us, uh, both within our own countries and in our operations in other countries. So, um, you know, the, this, we've, we've kind of reached the end of the line here. Mm. Uh, and there is a new sort of um, uh, constellation of, of, of forces taking mm. uh, the prominence here. We have a new leadership in Saudi Arabia, more active leadership. We have a new leadership in the United States. And we have... A, 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 a set of, of kind of factors that say enough is enough. You know, the extremism, extremism has really spread right across the globe now. Uh, uh, and so, sorry, so, so, yeah. when you talk about a new administration in, in, in Riyadh and a new administration in the U.S., some uh, have, have posited that this is this is sort of post the the, the first presidential trip abroad yes. for, for for President Trump to Riyadh somewhat three four weeks mm -hmm. ago now mm -hmm. uh, that this is sort of emboldened uh, those who in the past might have said look you know we're not sure we can get we can get the US on board and we need them on board on our side mm -hmm. this is sort of emboldened people is there any veracity in that do you, do you, uh, do you think and where does Qatar stand so far as its relations with the US is concerned going forward it's an important partner yeah I, would, I wouldn't say emboldened I'd say that you know there are greater chances of, of attacking extremism in the region uh, with the Trump administration on board. Mm. Um, given, given what we know about the Obama administration and its relationship with the various, uh, you know, sort of Isla, is, with the political Islam, let's say, um, you know, that was going to be a very tough sell. Mm. We've now seen where political Islam has taken us over the last sort of six or seven years. Uh, and we, we, we feel that we do have a partner in Trump uh, and the Trump administration uh, and with the United States. So how uh, Qatar is going to uh, go, go forward when the entire world
world is looking at um, government funding of extremism um, is, is going to be very interesting.